Okay, here we go. This is video one, video number one of this practice test. Let's begin. Number one reads, find the y-intercept of this equation. Okay, so what we need to remember is to find the y-intercept, we must set x equal to zero and solve. Write it out if you have to. To find the y-intercept, you are going to set your x value equal to zero and solve. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to rewrite this equation right here, but instead of the x value, I'm going to put a zero in there. So this is going to read negative 9 times 0 plus 4y equals 16, okay? So I know that negative 9 times 0 is 0. You could just scratch it out. My equation is a simple one-step equation that reads 4y equals 16, which means I could divide by 4 and divide by 4, and I will get my answer y equals 4. But what I need to do is understand what that answer is. That answer is the y-intercept, right? That's what we're solving for, right? The y-intercept. How do we find the y-intercept? We set x equal to 0 and it's solved. What do we get? We got y equals 4. That really does tell us, if we were to go to a graph, that it's going to cross the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what is this location? I mean. This location right here in red is the location 0, 4. Um, now, you didn't actually have to draw this out to know the coordinate 0, 4, because it does ask you to type, in, in, type it in as a coordinate with no spaces between your terms. So you have to type in parentheses 0, 4, close parentheses. But the bottom line is, since you set x equal to 0, and since you know that an ordered pair is really an x value and a y value, you just, we just said x equals 0, so the 0 is the x, so you put a 0 right there, comma, and the y value is the 4, so y right here, the second number is a 4, and that's the ordered pair that you need to type in, um, the ordered pair, uh, parentheses, 0, comma, 4, no spaces between your terms, that's what we have right there, 0, comma, 4, no spaces between your terms, inside parentheses. So right here, they're asking us to rewrite the equation in standard form. And I hope we remember that standard form is capital AX plus capital BY equals capital C. And the reason why they're capitalized is to help you remember that these are numbers. A, B, and C are just numbers, but you want them to be nice numbers. They could either be positive numbers or negative numbers. You don't want fractions. You don't want decimals. So whenever you hear uh, that you need to rewrite in standard form, you need to automatically think no fractions, no decimals. And you clearly have a fraction right here. So you need to multiply everything by the denominator of that fraction that you want to get rid of. So multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply everything by 3. So 3 times 4x, that is 12x. And then you have uh, minus 1 times 3 is 3, so you have a minus 3. Uh, and then you have the equal sign, so let's write the equal sign, whoops, um, apologize, equal sign, and then the 3 and the 3 cancel out, and I have uh, equals 2y. So we have now an equation that has no fractions. Now you might be thinking, oh, I want to get the y by itself. No, it's not asking for function form. Remember, function form or slope-intercept form, um, that's when you have y by itself. Uh, standard form is where you have the x's and y's on the left side of the equal sign and the number by itself without a variable on the right side. So I want this number on this side and I want that uh, 2y on the other side. So I'm going to start moving things. Now you can't just magically move them. In order to get rid of the minus 3, you got to do the opposite, plus 3. And what you do to one side, you do to the other side, plus 3. So let's rewrite what we have left. We have a 12x, 12x, we have the equal sign, and we have 2y plus 3. Let me just write that out, 2y plus 3. And from there, I want to move the 2y to the other side. I want to get rid of this 2y and have it over here on the left side of the equal sign because I have x's and y's on the left side of the equal sign. I want the number by itself. I want that 3 by itself. So I'm going to get rid of the 2y by subtracting 2y and subtracting 2y. Yes, it eliminates right here. So my final answer is 12x minus 2y equals positive 3. They're asking for standard form. This is standard form. And on the instructions, it says type in your answer with no spaces between your terms. It also says that if your a value is negative, change all the signs, multiply everything by negative 1 to make it positive. So in this case, the a value is positive 12. I don't have to change any signs. That is the answer that I type in for full credit. 
the domain values are the, well, uh, to really understand this, I'm going to go back to my drawing. So this is a machine, and remember, a function is like a machine. Like, what is a function form equation? Something like uh, y equals 2x plus 1, right? Um, or a slope-intercept form equation, y equals 2x plus 1. But anyways, this function, y equals 2x plus 1, is like a machine. You could put in a number 3. So if you do put in the number 3 right there, 2 times 3, you put it into the x. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So it comes out as a 7. You could plug in a 5, and 5 times, or 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Um, you could plug in a uh, 10, and when you plug in the 10, 2 times 10 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So it comes out as a 21. So as you could see, uh, these numbers that are going into the machine, those are called inputs. Inputs. And not only that, um, when they come out, those, these numbers are called outputs. Okay. And not only that, uh, when I put in the 3, where do I put it in? I put it into the x specifically. And I go 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And it's going to read y equals 7. So as the 7 comes out, the 7 is the output. But it's going to read y equals 7. So the outputs are technically your y values. And the inputs are technically your x values because you put them into the x. So once again, the inputs are the x values. And the outputs are the y values. Okay. And of course, we need to remember uh, that the inputs, the x values, they could also be called the domain values. Domain values. Okay. Um, and the outputs, the answers, the y values, those are also called the range, the range values. Okay. So um, there's also one more, one more uh, vocab term. So these numbers that go in, those are technically called independent values. Independent values. Why? Because I plugged in a 3. I plugged in a 5. I plugged in a 10. Why? Because I wanted to. I wanted to. Independent, right? Plug it in. But that 7, that one depends. It's, it depends on me plugging in a 3. If I didn't plug in a 3 over here into this machine, it would not come out a 7. So the 7 really does depend on that 3. So these numbers are called dependent values. Dependent values. Okay. So with this said, we need to understand that all of these words mean the same thing. The inputs, the x values, the domain values, even the independent values, they all mean the same thing. Those are the numbers that I plug in, the 3, the 5, the 10. The outputs, the outputs, the y values, the range values, and I'm also going to write dependent values. All of these words mean the same th thing. They're the numbers that come out of the machine. Okay, So I could refer to certain values as y values, or I could refer to them as range values or outputs. It all means the same thing. So anyways, with that bit of notes, I hope we understand how to answer this question. So let's actually do that right now. Whoops, technical difficulties there. I apologize. OK, right here it says the domain values are the what? They are the, here it is. The domain values are the x values. They're the inputs. They're the independent values. So let's look at that. They are the x values, the inputs, the dependent. No, the x values are independent. So that would make this false. That's wrong. So that's why this one's false. Uh, the domain values are the y values. Nope, that, that's not true. Uh, so that's false. The domain values are the x values. Yes. The inputs, yes. The independent values, yes. So this one is the correct answer. Obviously, the other ones are incorrect. Now, keep in mind, this is a practice quiz, which means that on the actual quiz, I'm going to change some of these words around, or maybe even ask for the range instead of the domain, which would mean that the range values are the same thing as the outputs, the y values, the dependent values. So keep that in mind. This drawing is very important. Please keep this in mind. Let's move on. Right here, we need to ask ourselves, how do we rewrite something in slope-intercept form? Well, we need to know what slope-intercept form is. 
Uh, slope intercept form is kind of like function form where you have y by itself, but more importantly, you have the slope, which is the m value right in front of x, plus your b value, that's your y intercept value. So this is slope intercept form. We need to know that. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So obviously we want y by itself. Um, and right here, y is definitely not by itself. It has a 2 in front of it. And not only that, it has a plus something x over here. So you want to move your x term to that side. So I would uh, move that by subtracting 4x and subtracting 4x. So let me rewrite my equation. I have a 2y. I'm going to write that right here. 2y. I have the equal sign, right, the equal sign. And then right here, 6 take away 4x. You can't really do it. So I need to uh, rewrite 6 take away 4x. But instead of 6 take away 4x, I want my x term first. So I'm going to write minus 4x first and then plus 6. So write the minus 4x first and then the positive 6. Now we almost have y by itself. Uh, all I need to do is get rid of this multiplication of 2. So how do I get rid of the multiplication of 2? I do the opposite, which is dividing by 2. What I do to one side, I have to do to the entire other side. So my answer is y equals negative 2x plus 3. This is my slope-intercept form equation. And it does ask us to type in your equation with no spaces between your terms. So put y, no space, equal, no space, negative sign, no space, all that exactly the way it is. And you will get full credit on this question. So we have another question right here involving the vocabulary state the domain, right? So let's go back to our sketch that we did with functions. Um, the machine is y equals 2x plus 1. You have your inputs that go in, the outputs that come out. But remember, inputs, x values, domain values, independent values, they all mean the same thing. There are these numbers that are, you're plugging in to the x. Okay, And these answers that come out of the machine, those are outputs, they're y values, they're range values, they're dependent values. So let's go back to our question. It says, state the domain. So what's another word for stating the domain? You're talking about, especially when you're talking about coordinates. Coordinates are x and y values, x and y values, x and y values. So it, when they tell you state the domain, they're really telling you to state the x values. So what are the x values of the domain? Uh, I mean, not of the domain, of these coordinates. What are the domain values of these coordinates? It's 1, negative 3, and 7. That's the answer 1, negative 3, and 7. So if you look at that answer, that's the only one that's right. All the other ones are incorrect. Uh, keep in mind, this is a practice quiz, which means I probably am going to change some numbers. Um, but the domain values will be those the x, the x, the x. Now, if I would have said range, I might change the word domain to range. Then it would be 2, 4, and 9. Or maybe instead of a domain, I say uh, independent values. State the independent values. And you should know, oh, independent values are the same thing as the x values. So you would state the same thing, 1, negative 3, and 7. So I could change the vocab word all around. You need to know, you pretty much need to know this uh, diagram right here and, and understand it. On this question, we have a standard form equation. It's not in slope intercept form. We want to graph it. Now, yes, you can change it to y equals mx plus b if you really wanted to. You could change to y equals mx plus b, and you'll know where it crosses the y-axis, maybe right there. And you'll know how much you rise and run according to your slope, how much you go up and over according to your slope. Um, or, because it's in standard form, you could find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, right? So to find the x-intercept, all you have to do is cover up your y. Set y equal to 0 and solve, right? So, and then, like right here, when you have 2x equals negative 6, you have to solve it you get x equals negative 3. Now, this is your x-intercept. Now, for the y-intercept, all you got to do is cover up the x, because you're going to set x equal to 0, which means that it cancels out. So what you really have here is negative 3y equals negative 6. So divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and you will get your y-intercept value, your y-intercept value of uh, y equaling positive 2. Okay, so you now know where it crosses your x-axis and where it crosses your y-axis. One, two, three, crosses right there. That's the x-intercept. And it crosses at two, one, two, crosses right there. So your line is like that. There's your line. So which one of these options has the x-intercept at negative three and the y-intercept at positive two? Negative three, nope. Negative three, nope. Nope. Nope, so none of these. So the correct answer is none of these, right? 
That's why there's a green dot on none of these. Now, if you wanted to, what we could have done from the beginning, if you don't like slow, if you don't like uh, x intercepts and y intercepts, we could go with y equals mx plus b. But that will take a little bit more work. You would have to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. You would have a new equation that reads, um, and I'm going to write it down here, negative 3y equaling negative 2x minus 6. And then you'd have to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, giving you your final slope intercept form equation y equals a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that's 2 thirds. You can't really divide the 2 divided by 3, so you just leave it 2 thirds, but the negative and negative become positive. You still have the x right next to it. Um, and we do have a plus 2. Plus 2 is the b value. So this would mean that it crosses at 2 and it goes up 2 over 3. So it crosses your y-axis at 2. So here's your y-axis. It crosses right there at 2. And you're supposed to go up 2 over 3. So technically, you'd be going up 1, 2 and over 1, 2, 3. And your next dot should be uh, right here, which it is if you extend the line this way. Okay, um, But still, you can't find those answers uh, as a multiple choice. That's why it's none of these. So I showed you both ways on graphing uh, using x-intercept and y-intercept and also changing it to slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b to graph. So whenever I have a question that says graph and I have multiple choice answers, I don't waste time looking at the multiple choice answers. I actually just sketch the graph or think of the graph in my head. This is in y equals mx plus b. mx plus b. Uh, you could clearly see that your b value is 4, your y-intercept is at 4, and you could clearly see that your slope is the fraction negative 2 over 1. So when I sketch it out in my head, I know that it crosses at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's my y-intercept. You put a dot right there. Now from that dot, you're going to go down 2 because it's a negative 2 over 1. So down 1, 2 over 1 unit only. So you put a dot right there. Again, you're only going uh, down to one unit over, and you'd put a dot right there. Now, this is your graph, and find that graph, and you'll be good to go. So, does this one cross at four? No, it doesn't. It doesn't cross at four. This one crosses at two. This one crosses at four. And do I go down 2 over 1? Let's see, do I go down 2 over 1? Yes, I do. If I go down 2 over 1 again, I will get to that point right there. So this is the correct answer. Okay. Let's move on. So notice that this equation is not in standard form and it's not in slope-intercept form. So you have to change it to one of the forms that you know how to graph, right? So I would say get y by itself, make it a y equals mx plus b equation. How do you get rid of the multiplication of 2 right in front of the y? Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, giving you a new equation that reads y equals, the slope is 4 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2, that is 2, and of course you have an x right there, and then plus 8 divided by 2 is 4, okay? 8 divided by 2 is 4. So here's my slope-intercept form equation. How do I graph this? It crosses at 4, and you go up 2 over 1. If you don't have a fraction, you could easily make it look like a fraction by putting it over 1. So just a quick sketch. Crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot right there. And then from that dot, I go up 2 over 1. So up 1, 2 over 1 and put a dot right there, like so. And from that red dot to that red dot, you have that line. You should be able to identify which one that is. And it's not this one, not this one, or is it that one? Let me see. This one does cross at 4, and I do. it looks like I do go up 2 over 1, but I'm going to be off the graph. So you may have to go that pattern of up 2 over 1 backwards to see if it, uh, instead of going up 2 over 1, go over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2, and you will get to that next point, over 1, down 2, and you will get to that next point. So this is the correct answer right here. Okay. If you really wanted to, you could go back to the original equation, um, 2y equals 4x plus 8, and you could find the x-intercept. How do you find the x-intercept? Well, set y equal to 0, which would make this uh, 2 times 0 equals 4x plus 8. That would be 4x plus 8, but instead of equal 0 on this side, you could put equal 0 on that side. 
and then you could solve for x by subtracting 8, subtracting 8, and getting 4x equals negative 8, which means that x equals negative 2, and that's your x-intercept, right? We just found the x-intercept by setting y equal to 0. Uh, the x-intercept we found by setting y equal to 0 and solving. So I took this uh, y value of 0, or y value, put 0 in it, solved it, and got the x-intercept. That's telling me that it's going to cross the x-axis. This is the x-axis right here. It's going to cross the x-axis at negative 2. So if you put a dot right there, that line will continue and cross right through that point. So you'll see that this is the correct answer because it crosses at negative 2. And if you did find the y-intercept, the y-int, by setting x equal to 0, you're going to see that it will cross at positive 4. Um, we could do that right now if you'd like. Go back to the original. Um, set x equal to 0. So 4 times 0 is going to be 0. You're going to have 2y equals 8. And if you did solve 2y equals 8, that would be y equals 4. So you'll, you do see that it does cross at 4 right there as well. So this is the correct answer. All the other ones are incorrect.